This video is going to be about a bit of a problem situation that's happening. So this is a friend of mine. I haven't seen her in a while. This is the first time after I don't know, a couple of years or something. So she's been having issues with her with her skin around the nails. So you can see there is a little bit of inflammation. It could be some kind of allergic reaction. I don't think it's to any nail products. There is nothing here but there is a separation. It could be to lemons actually, because she works in a restaurant and deals with lemons. We honestly don't know. She went to a dermatologist. They kind of don't know, they gave her steroids. So steroid, what it does, it reduces the inflammation, but the key is to understand why is this inflammation happening? So usually it's like we have to eliminate certain things and see, really pay attention when this is getting worse. And there's another problem here, and we don't know why this is happening, so here. Who knows? This is the nail, the finger that has the inflammation. It could be due to, this usually happens due to like a major trauma or again, inflammation. Because this is where the nail is actually being made in a matrix area underneath this fold. This is why also we have to be so careful with the nail fold. And as you can see that that nail fold is kind of like missing that edge here as well. So there's something going on. I mean, I don't think there is any disease happening. So I, don't, I think we can do a very gentle manicure, but we have to pay attention to, to what's going on with these nails and see if it's getting worse or if it's getting better. So this happens due to either a trauma because you are disrupting how the nail is being made in that area. Often it happens actually with toes and it grows out or it can happen due to infection because the body is trying to fight the infection. It's just not making the nail properly. So we don't know. So she wanted to basically just kind of again, start taking care of her nails and change the shape a little bit and see what we can do. I would definitely not recommend, especially with this nail, especially with this, because this, this skin has impaired skin barrier. Obviously something is going on. So I would not be using any, any gel polishes, anything like that, because they, 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 they are allergenic. So when the skin is not 100%, it's not a good idea. Anyway, so we're going to start with just shaping the nails, but first I'm going to take some pictures. Okay, so we're back after taking pictures. So what I'm going to do is just start shaping the nails and I'm still on the fence about wearing a nail polish or not because of this separation here. We might do a nail polish once and see if this gets better or not. Because she's had this in the past and even after wearing shellac, which is gel polish, it kind of grew out. So really, it's puzzling, but we'll see. I'm going to start shaping that nail a little bit more oval, but I'm not going to do anything drastic. So very often when people try to um, achieve that very oval look, they really go and they file into this area. I'm not gonna do that, because that's just not good. I'm just going to slowly shape this nail. See here from the side a little bit. So for this purpose, especially, with the nails that are shaped this way, a very slim file is a good idea because sometimes the thicker files are difficult to gently fit into that area. But I'm doing this gently, I'm not forcing, I'm not going like this, trying to force my file into the sidewall. So we're just getting this under file under the, the nail. It's always best to keep the nails that are separated kind of as short as possible because when they're longer, what happens is so there is a hyponychium here, which is a, which is a seal. You, you don't want that seal normally broken. But sometimes with longer nails, what's happening as you're using your nails normally, the nails kind of get pushed up, and that can break the seal, especially. Um, the seal can get even more damaged when the seal is already broken. So always it's the best idea to keep the nails as short as possible. Sometimes even cutting them out. But that also depends because let's say if, you know, sometimes it can be due to um, medication, it can be due to psoriasis, there's so many different reasons why this could happen. So let's say if this is happening to due to psoriasis, cutting it out is not going to help. Treating psoriasis is going to help. 
So now this can be totally done at home as well. And I'm going to show you later on how to use this file instead of electric file. But I'm going to use electric file because I like it. I really don't recommend using electric file if you are... Honestly, it's not needed if you're not doing this for a living. So there are two things that can help to change the shape of the nail plate. Wearing some sort of coating, so for sure gel, acrylic, these, these kind of coatings, like more rigid coatings are going to help for sure, but they all have pros and cons. But I find from experience also nail polish to a degree helps that. Now, it doesn't, it just really depends on the person. You can't just say that every person, when they wear nail polish, their nails are going to change. But usually after wearing nail polish, the shape of the nail changes a bit. And for some people it changes a lot, and for some people it changes a little bit. And also, for some reason, the nail bed actually gets longer. So the pink part gets longer. So the nail kind of like reattaches a little bit better. I have no idea why this happens. But it happens and again the second thing would be shaping the nails properly on a regular basis i would normally suggest and i think we're gonna try to do these manicures um once a week and see just to show you guys the progress and this is why i recommend learning and doing these manicures at home it's really not difficult. And the way I kind of teach these manicures is really simple. And yes, at the beginning, everything, anything is difficult. So just, just trying to do these manicures weekly, not aiming for perfection, aiming for improvement. So sadly, normally we carry these files, but they're out of stock until mid-November. So I will keep you guys updated about these files. You can also use obviously the other files that we carry, but in this case, I think this file would be helpful. These files are fantastic for toes because toenails are much smaller and they sometimes can have um, corners that dig into the skin. So this is normally the file that I would recommend for um, pedicures but yes they sold out pretty quickly I tried to order it more and we won't have them until mid-November so very sad When I talk about the nail polish helping to change the shape of the nails, people get confused and they're like, but you said that nail polish can damage the nails. Yes, because everything in life has pros and cons. So um, it's not really that these things are good or bad. It's just that these things has, have pros and cons. It's just like with hair color, I was mentioning that, that to a client. So if we want to change color a little bit, there's going to be very minimal damage right especially if someone knows what they're doing they're using good quality product i mean obviously it's not good for your hair but you know it's sometimes worth changing or adjusting the color a bit. now if you want to make big changes then yes the damage can be more excessive so um, it's just everything has pros and cons if you want to change your hair from black to blonde then it's going to cause some damage and the same thing with, you know, wearing acrylics. So if someone wants to have very long nails, okay. 
but they just have to know that it's not only important to apply these products properly and remove them properly, but they also have to be worn properly. So with care, without just hitting your nails, without taking the product off harshly, because all these things um, can damage the nails. And even just um, very often people say that they want acrylic or gel because they are hard on their nails. To me, that's actually a contraindication because being hard on your nails, um, usually it's going to add to the damage. Because when you have a product that's bonded to the nail and now you're like yanking at that surface constantly, then of course you're gonna get that surface damage. And then obviously people blame the nail technicians, which I'm not saying that they're without fault because the amount of times that I heard that people take off the products professionals, so-called, incorrectly. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't believe how many people do that. Um, yeah, it's not only the nail technicians, but actually wearing the product without special care. It's just like, if, again, if you went from black hair to blonde, now you have to really take care of your hair. You can't go swimming all the time in chlorinated water and then you use, you know, dish detergent because, you know, you don't have time to use a conditioner or some good bonding products or something. Sometimes when someone is hard on their nails, honestly, I would suggest not having acrylics or gel or anything like that because that can damage the nails. And the thing too is if the bond is very, very strong, when you think about it, the bond of the product to the nail is stronger than the bond of the finger to the nail, you're going to rip off your nail. And I've seen it numerous times, unfortunately. So I'm just going to nudge the skin fold. And I'm not going to do anything to this area because I don't want to aggravate it further. So we're just going to leave it and see how it looks next week. Honestly, I forgot because we were chatting earlier if I said that on on this video or not, but why I don't recommend wearing nail polish or especially any type of enhancements when there is a separation like that because um, any product applied on the nail will um, make the, the nail retain more moisture. So there's more moisture underneath, which is a perfect breeding ground for bacteria, especially if that area is darker then. So what happens is instead of the moisture evaporating, through the nail out, it gets trapped underneath and causes can cause definitely a problem. Another thing is that now the nail is mm, attached to the finger by a much small, smaller area. So now if you hit something hard, this is not as stable as let's say these nails. So you might rip that nail. So this is why you have to be very careful with nails that are separated. We'll see how the nail is in, in a week, but if you can live with that nail polish, sometimes it's a good idea too. So you see, I'm going to just smooth this a little bit. So there's just a skin build up here, little calluses, so this is what I'm doing. I think I repeat this in every single video, but you cannot treat dry skin by filing it. That doesn't help dry skin whatsoever. The filing only removes like extra skin. So if there is a callus hardness, so then just reducing it a little bit helps. But that's it. The dryness has to be addressed by the client at home. Uh, number one, using very gentle cleansers. I really don't believe that bar soaps are good for the skin. They're way too alkaline. They disrupt the skin barrier. Um, a lot of other deter detergents do the same thing, but looking for very gentle detergents is number one. Two, just applying small amount of either lotion or something light after each hand wash as you can. Like I understand that this sounds like ridiculous, but when you think about it, the hand washing strips all the protective oil from the skin. So we're not doing anything ridiculous. We're just replacing the oils that we have stripped from the skin. 
and I get a lot of questions. People are like, oh, I'm in the medical field. I have to wash my hands a million times and I can't do it. Well, then do it at home when you're not at work. Same thing, people that work, work in the food industry. Okay, I understand you might not be able to do this at work, but try doing this when you're not at work. It's not all like black and white. You do as much as you can. You're gonna see progress. And often people over apply things. They just apply so much thinking that more is better, which is not the case whatsoever. You're just applying tiniest amount that soaks in right away and find something that's very light as well. And also what helps, because a lot of the lotions are water-based, which is good because it brings the water back to the skin, but using also a drop of oil is enough for all 10 meals, also helps. And you don't have to use as much as you see on, you know, the Instagram videos. And I'm kind of guilty of that too, because normally when we do manicures, we apply like a drop of oil for each nail without really explaining anything to the client. We just tell them, yeah, yeah, use oil. Um, so they think they have to use a drop of oil per nail, which is not the case. I mean, after a manicure, very often, especially with shellac manicures or um, even regular manicures, we wipe the hands with alcohol or the skin around the nails with alcohol. So um, we apply a little bit more oil, but normally you don't have to apply this much. You just want to use one drop. I usually put one drop here and just kind of spread it all around the nails. And that's enough. Because again, you didn't wash off like, you know, half a glass of oil from your nails or your skin. Okay, so I wanted to show you how to do this with this other file. Okay, so the surface of this little bit is the same really as the file, right? So this is a diamond. So you can also take, let's just take this nail, this side or even the fine side, and just kind of go like this, very gently. And that will soften the skin and you will feel the difference, right? Let's just see here. The reason why I like using electric file is because it's a very precise tool um, and I can touch small amount of skin. I don't overlap over the area that's not hardened. But if you're doing this gently, you can totally do it as well. That's it. By the way, if you are using a cuticle remover to remove the cuticle, I would definitely skip that nail that has the issue around the skin fold because you don't want to irritate it. Cuticle removers can also be irritating to the skin, especially when they are applied incorrectly over the skin. So I would skip it. There's a little piece that we're going to snip. So I'm just going to soften the free edge. So now when it comes to allergic reactions, it's really kind of like a contact dermatitis, really. It is good to pay attention to when they are happening. Usually when it comes to gels, the um, symptoms, they start to happen, I would say two, three days later. And there is usually some itching, some redness, things like that. Then after a while, when you keep exposing yourself to the, um, the allergen, the the reaction happens much quicker. So then it happens after like one day, after a while, then it happens right away, or when people go home, um, it starts happening. Same thing, people can be allergic to nail polish too. And don't think just because something is hypoallergenic, it's not going to cause allergic reaction. Hypoallergenic, all it means that it is less likely to cause 
allergic reaction. But if you are already allergic to something, you're gonna have a reaction usually. So once you're allergic, it's too late to hope, usually I would say 99%, that hypoallergenic products are the solution. And there are so many people now with allergic reactions to these products, it's just actually scary. I get comments all the time on some of the videos that I've made about this, pro this, this problem. So people kind of start blaming different chemicals and really it's not that, it's usually improper use and improper formulations of the product. So, you know, it's a, it's a complicated issue for sure. So as you can see, the skin around the nails still looks dry. I just wiped it with alcohol. Don't try to like, I can see there is a little bit of hard skin around here. So I'm just gonna try to get it this way. But don't try to make it perfect. As I'm finally the nail the skin but it's going to look dry because I just wiped it with alcohol all right so now they're ready for a nail polish so we're gonna do like something super simple so we can still see the underside of the well the separation so these polishes are designed to be worn without a base coat and without a top coat. So meaning that they have a decent shine on their own and they have decent adhesion. They actually have a pretty good adhesion. And they actually dry, I would say two coats, two thin coats, like five minutes. But then again, it really depends. The wear depends on the on the quality of the nails, so how, how thick the nails are, how healthy the nails are, and how we use our hands, right? Because someone who's in water all the time, their nail polish is not going to last, or let's say has very flexible nails, their nail polish is not going to last as, as good as someone who has very um, brittle, let's say brittle or thicker nails, drier nails that is not in, in water a lot. But the most important thing is improving the, the quality of the nails. So the healthier the nails are, the better they're going to hold on to the nail polish. Because as you can see, the shine is a little gone, which indicates that the solvents have evaporated. So obviously polishes that are like just two coats without a top coat, they're not going to have the same look as the polishes that do require base coat and top coat because the more coats you add, obviously the, the smoother the surface is going to be. But this is good for like just a quick manicure. And this way you also don't have to buy like many bottles or if you're going on vacation or something and you know you're gonna wanna change your nail polish, you don't have to take so much with you. So the idea is pretty good, I think. Okay, I'm gonna let them try for five minutes and then we'll see how they look. So I'm actually going to use the quick dry spray really what it is it's a silicone like a very light silicone um, so it's a little bit less heavy than the oil and in this case sometimes it's nice to use this after service i don't use it after dazzle dry because it's not recommended so you don't see me use it often but i do sometimes see it kind of it's not very greasy which is nice But again, I'm going to show you how much oil to use. So one drop like this, and I actually show this to my clients like this. And then because it's still a little greasy, grab a towel that you're gonna use for, you know, you're drying your hands or something that you've used and just wipe it off. And it's, that's all you need. Um, it really helps over time. Don't forget too, when you think about it, the skin barrier, 
when it's not functioning properly, it can uh, allow allergens to enter. So working in bacteria and fungal spores and all that stuff. So because our skin is made to keep things out. So when that skin barrier is, is not functioning properly, then things get in and that creates issues. So this is why it's so important to just take it easy with all the exfoliation that, that people are doing because they see dry skin and they exfoliate, which is like the worst thing you can do. So exfoliation is okay in very small amounts. People overdo it all the time. And initially it looks good because the skin is literally, it's actually inflamed. So it just looks very smooth and shiny, but the skin is not happy this way. So it's very important to work on good skin barrier and that can take a, a while. So not three days, that's for sure. Like a month, two, three months sometimes. Okay, so they look really pretty actually though. Wow. You know, it's it's really nice when you can be impressed with your own work. <laughs> but they look really, really good. So you see all the dryness around this, this, the nails is gone. The nails don't look bad. So what the nails need is not more cutting, they need more oil. And again, we didn't apply a lot of oil, just some cream and so the just tiniest amount of oil is makes the nails look so much better. Alrighty, so hopefully we'll see this client next week and we'll see how the nails are. Thank you so much guys for watching. Bye.